This week, first up. Oh, batteries. I love battery holders. This is a two by two AA battery holder. It should hold four total AA's in series for about four to eight, four point eight to six volts, depending on whether you use rechargeables or alkaline. But this is a special box. Not only is it like that kind of standard cubic uh, AA battery holder, but it has these really nice premium Toronto blocks at the end. Uh, uh, um, sorry, a, a premium um, plug connectors at the end that. Um, plug right into a breadboard and are nice and solid. So usually you get like thin wires. No, no, no. You get these nice um, tips here that are um, 0.1 inch by 0.1 inch square. And so for example, if you have a breadboard and you want to power your project up, plugs right in and it's like a, such a blessing and it just, it just works and it's nice and solid. You don't have to solder anything. Of course you can solder them if you like, but um, this is definitely the easiest way to battery power something. Um, either with a breadboard or soldered or into a terminal block or what have you. Next up. We have the official Raspberry Pi Foundation A Plus case. This is a slim case. Um, you know, you can pop the top off. It's uh, pretty straightforward. You put your Raspberry Pi 3 A Plus, which they just released, into it. I think it'll also fit the original A Plus if you have one. And um, it looks a little bit like the red and white one uh, case that they have also for the 3B+. Plus. They also released a more modular case. This one's quite simple. It's only two pieces. Um, but fits your A+, plus great. Okay. This one is on its way. But Coming we, soon. We put in the store so you could sign up for That's it. Right. It's the compute module This is the compute kit. module dev kit. So this is the I.O. kit that you plug a Raspberry Pi compute kit into it. And it gives you like, all those GPIO. You get so many pins. Like it's like 200 pins that you get. You get USB. Um, you don't get Ethernet, but you do get HDMI. You get USB host, you get USB client, and then you also get an SD card socket. It's just like an all-in-one power supply management system that you plug the chip into, uh, yeah. the module into, uh, so you can develop your own uh, industrial uses. It's not used by makers a lot, unless you happen to really need a Raspberry Pi with a ton of pins. Like you need of, infinite pins. So the reason why that came out is because these came out. These are new compute module three pluses. So the, the new compute modules have the new nice heat spreader. You'll see that on top, that metal. So it, it does run faster because it doesn't overheat. You don't have to put a heat sink on it. Um, it uses, I think, a slight revision of the CPU chip. It's still a quad core. Um, but the biggest difference is now you can get it with multiple different sizes of EMCC flash. So we have right now uh, to sign up, you can get the eight megabyte, sorry, the eight gigabyte EMCC flash. And then we also have the light version. This is the light version. You can see there's a chip missing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that one, you would use the SD card socket on the dev kit only. It does, you don't want to use the EMCC instead. Um, so these are used often by people doing products or you know embedded design, or they they want to um, have uh, a lot of GPIO. They don't want the bulk of the um, or the the power usage of having all the the, the USB host, uh, the, sorry, the USB hub and the Ethernet. Um, they're much slimmer and they fit into a, a, a so dim stop socket, so it's easy to integrate into your final design. But you know nothing. It's not going to be as cheap as a Pi Zero. So if you are just a maker. Um, Maybe this is when you make a product that you want to commercialize mm -hmm. and you want to be able to slot these in. Okay, next up. We now have these OLED feather wings you know and love, but now they come assembled. So if you don't want to do any soldering at all, um, the OLED now comes with headers attached on it for a little bit more. Uh, you can plug it into your uh, favorite feather wing or doubler or tripler, uh, plug it on top, and now you have an OLED display with a couple buttons. So yes, the OLED you know and love now with headers. Okay. Mm. I think we just have a bunch of those. Yeah. Same stuff. All right. Next up. Okay, next up, we have these chunky LEDs. You actually sent these to me and you said, hey, check out these cool chunky LEDs. So these are um, 15 millimeter by 15 millimeter uh, square LEDs. They're breadboard friendly. Uh, we have them in blue and red and they're just like chunky and diffused. Um, they look really good. They are a little tough to photograph, um, but I can try showing them and maybe I'll use a piece of paper to yeah. uh, diffuse them. So this is it. You can see my demo with that battery pack, which works really well. And I'll see if I can diffuse yeah. it. So you can see it's um, a nice solid red in person, of course. It's a nice, a nice smooth red color and it's completely uniform. So green is an indicator 
um, if you want to um, have something that has a, a cosplay effect or an indicator effect that is nice and big and flat and even color. So we have it in red. We also have it in long polarity blue. Um, the blue is a little bit brighter than, than the red, of course, because blue leaves tend yeah, to be a little bit brighter. Yeah, there you go. That's nice. Uh, that's nice. Um, it's just like a normal LED. Um, you can drive it from a control pin, put a resistor in series, and boom, you've just got this beautiful LED. I just think these just look really nice. I think these would be um, a great addition to a control panel or, or cosplay prop or something when you okay. want like a sci-fi look. Next up. Slight update, um, no schematic or hardware changes, but we did update the color. I do actually want to make all the M4 board, boards purple to differentiate them from the M0 boards. So this Metro M4 Express now comes in a lovely purple color, just like before, but now in purple. Nice. Look at that solid purple color and then MOSFETs on the back. Still featuring the SAMD 51. The Metro M4 has, uh, I think, 512 megabytes of, uh, kilobytes of flash. 192 kilobytes of RAM, um, tons of GPIO, uh, you know, caching. Uh, I can do like camera inputs. Uh, it's got two megabytes of QSPY flash. Great for Circuit Python. Wonderful Circuit Python. Of course, you can use Arduino with it as well. And now it's in purple. And the reason for that discount code tonight is because of this. Yes, our star of the show tonight is the 2.13 inch e-ink breakout board. We have the 1.54 inch that we put in. A couple months ago, actually, Ooh, quite a while ago. And I finally got around to getting the 2.13 inch in stock. Um, this is a tri-color display. What that means is it can display white, black, or red. Um, but you can't mix the black and red. It's like you can only have one of those three colors. Um, but it's nice you can have black and white and then um, some nice highlighting in red. So here's um, a demo of it running. And it's just, you've got the, the black, white, and red lines. And this is it drawing the image you can see it takes um, a bit of time to get the image up that's because that red color especially um, the red ink is a little um, more globular so it takes more time for it to kind of like sink in because it has to do this wave pulse to get the ink to appear um, you can refresh it about once every three minutes I'm, I'm speeding it up here so that people can see you know much faster but for for the best longevity uh, refresh it about once every uh, three minutes um, what's nice about these, you might be thinking like, oh, I can get e-ink displays like so cheap anywhere, but why, why would I get these? So we did a really nice thing here, which we added SRAM chip on the back. So not only do you get the display, and like, of course I can unplug it because it's... Well, we can also show the photo. You can show the photo. On the back, of course, is fully level shifted. So you can use 3-volt or 5-volt microcontrollers or my computers. And below that big level shifter is an SRAM chip. So normally you need about 6 kilobytes of SRAM or RAM to buffer the entire display. These displays, you can't update just one section. You have to update the entire display at once. So you have to buffer the entire display in memory. But for smaller chips, um, like the Mega 328, they only have 2K of RAM. There's no way for you to store that entire buffer. Are you like out of luck? No, because this board will um, use that SRAM chip in our library, will use that SRAM chip for you. And because e-ink is a pretty, you, know, you can see it's slow to update, it doesn't matter that you have an SRAM chip in the middle. Um, it doesn't slow it down that much. And you don't need to use any RAM at all to um, display onto the display. And even if you have an M0 with 32 kilobytes of RAM or an STM32, 6K of SRAM is quite a big. You probably want to save that for something else. In this case, again, that extra SRAM chip it only takes one more pin because you're already using SPI for the display. But um, you get to offload all that memory usage. We also put an SD card slot on the back so you can um, store images. And there's a shutdown pin, so if you want to completely use no power whatsoever, you can shut down the regulator and all the circuitry on board uh, is turned off. So you can go to ultra, ultra low power modes and only use the quiescent power of the regulator, which is like, I think, 0.1 micro amperes or something. So that's the uh, tricolor 2.13 inch ink display. We've got coded in Arduino and CircuitPython. So you can use it with your um, Raspberry Pi. You can use it with your CircuitPython boards. Uh, you can use it with Arduino, pretty much anything you like. And that's the new products.